I once shredded a bag like that, just out of pure rage. Thanks, pal. So, what else can you tell me about Dunn's death? Well, not much. My memory's not what it used to be. Uh, you'd better ask the cleaning lady. She found the body. It should be her shift down at Sam's Diner. The place is close by. Take the main door and follow the street. <laughs> Just wait till you see her. You're in for a treat, my friend. What was Joe Dunn like? Uh, he was a decent man. Have you seen all those slogans on the wall? Those motivational phrases? Joe really believed in them. All of them. He played the saxophone, right? Yeah, pretty well for a white boy. But he quit when his wife died. Makes no sense, right? I mean, nothing draws chicks like the brass. Why quit when you're finally free? <laughs> I found an empty wine bottle on the rooftop. Did Joe Dunn drink? Uh, only for a while, back when his wife died. But eventually he quit. After that, he'd only drink on special occasions. Do you have any idea where Bobby Yale could be? Not a clue. Do you know any of his relatives? His, his father, Ev, uh, Ev, uh, Avenarius. Avenarius? The boxer poet? Didn't he disappear 20 years ago? Yeah, and his wife, Bobby's mom, died shortly a a after. Dunn is the closest thing the family the poor kids had ever since. If Yale's gonna fight the reigning champion, he's got a big career ahead of him. He hasn't lost a single fight since he turned pro. The little bastard beat the socks off me a few years back. You said Yale joined a gang back in the day? Know which one? Hell, I don't know, John. This is New York City. There are more gangs than people. I dropped by Bobby Yale's apartment. I think he might be involved with O'Leary. The bookmaker. Uh, you sure? Yale had some dark years, no doubt, but Dunn turned him into a decent guy. I'm no d detective, but I wouldn't follow that lead. What can you tell me about Sonia Dunn? She's hot, ain't she? <laughs> You two seem to get along nicely. Well, I've known it since she was a baby. But she sure has grown, uh, if you get my drift. I hadn't seen her since she left for college about four years ago. It seems like her father's death didn't really upset her. Well, she likes to play it cool, which makes her really hot. Dunn wasn't black. But he allowed you and Bobby Yale to train here. Yeah, this was the first integrated gym in the city, I think. I better let you get back to your drills. All right.
The racist's brain is so full of hatred that there's no space for trifles such as common sense or, say, spelling. But this most cultured writer spotted the error and attempted to correct it. Not sure what to make of the outcome. Hmm. What the hell? <laughs> Jake, give me one good reason not to smash in your face. What the hell are you doing in my locker? I'm a detective. That's what I do. Yeah, and my friend too. But that's what I thought. Get mm. off me. Sometimes, John, I can mm. just punch you. Jake, what mess are you in? Okay, Jake. I told you! Desmond O'Leary. Huh? I know you work for him. Now you're just making stuff up. Why would you say that? I saw the shamrock in your locker. I know what it means. Okay. Let's say you're right. So what? What are you gonna do, huh? We're pals. I won't do a thing, but please, tell me the truth. Okay, I, I guess I should have said something. Business isn't going that well lately. Natalia was my last well-paying job, and it's been a while. Then, O'Leary shows up and offers me a, 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 a bodyguard contract. What was I supposed to do? Yeah, I understand. Seriously? You don't seem like the type to accept, uh, shady offers. I've done things like that, and worse, that I'm not proud of them. This very morning, for example. Hey, uh, O'Leary might run an illegal gambling operation, but it's not like he's killing people or conning widows, and I... I'm just a bodyguard. I make sure no one gets hurt. What I do, including my contract and paycheck, is 100% legal. How bad can that be? Yeah, you're right. The fact that his business is illegal doesn't turn you into a criminal. We're only accountable for our own actions. But that's not what bothers me. I know you're covering up O'Leary's role in Joe Dunn's death. Huh? O'Leary? No way. I mean, I don't think so. Jake, please. Well, I guess there's no point in hiding it now. I was here the day Dunn died. Go on. I had to take care of some business for O'Leary. He makes me wear the shamrock when I work for him. As you know, I left the damn thing in my locker. So, I decided to come in the back door. Joe had mentioned he'd been painting that afternoon, but I forgot. I stopped in my tracks when I saw him screaming bloody murder at Bobby Yale at the top of the scaffold. What exactly was he saying? Uh, something like, uh, if you do that, I'll call off the fight and make sure you never set foot in this gym again. I didn't want them to see me, so I left. 
Jake, why didn't you tell me? I thought you'd be pissed off. Well, you were wrong. I'm sorry, John. I, I should have said something. Don't worry. We all make mistakes. Time to go. I need to think about everything you just told me. Thanks, John. Looks like a chest expander, doesn't it? Good morning, sir. Hi, sir. Good morning to you. John Blacksad, Private Eye. Would you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Not at all. Proceed, Your Honor. Were you here on Sunday afternoon? Yes, indeed, kind prince. I came down to watch TV after having run the New York City Marathon in record time. <coughs> Is there anything I can do for you? Well, there is indeed. Move. You're blocking my view of this wonderful sunset. <laughs> it just so happens that you can, apple of my eye, do this old man a favor and bring him some sustenance. <laughs> All right. Mary Purnell, the person who found Dunn's body, works a block away from the gym. I'm certain she can give me the kind of information that... Hey! Watch where you're going, you jerk! You looking for trouble, moron? 
You better watch it. Go to hell, man! You better not show your face around here! And there you go. We'll miss you at Sam's Diner. Come back soon. Welcome to Sam's Diner. What can I get for you? Black Sad, Private Eye. I work for Sonia Dunn. I need to ask you some questions about Joe Dunn. Um, sure. But I'm working right now. <laughs> Maybe later? I only see one customer sitting at the counter, and he's asking for your cooperation. All right. What can you tell me about Sonia Dunn? I barely know her, but she looks like a smart girl, poor thing. Let's talk a bit more about Joe Dunn. Can you tell me how you found Dunn's body? Well, I thought I was alone. I clean early in the morning before Mr. Dunn comes in. Oh, so you have keys to the gym? Yes, of course. There was paint on the floor, so I thought it'd be a busy morning. And then I saw him, hanging there, like a baby mobile over a crib. Then I think I panicked. When I calmed down, I called the police and waited outside. Sorry, that's all I can say. Don't worry. But if you remember anything else, let me know. What kind of boss was Joe Dunn? A good one. Always paid on time, never raised his voice. If I asked for the day off, he even cleaned the gym. How was Joe Dunn outside the gym? I wouldn't know. I only saw him at the gym or right there. That was his spot. I think everyone liked him. Thanks, but I still don't get why he'd commit suicide. I heard his relationship with his daughter wasn't ideal. Oh, really? Poor man. I don't have kids, but that has to be really hard. His wife died years ago. Maybe he never got over it. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe he did. That was a long time ago. Maybe he simply had money issues. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Could be. The gym didn't really get that dirty lately. Any ideas where Bobby Yale could be? How... how am I supposed to know? He's rarely there when I clean the gym. Bobby seems like a nice kid, but I... I barely know him. Can I ask you about your job? Uh, which one? How long have you worked at the gym? It's been, what, four or five years? Although... I don't think I'll be able to set foot in there again. This must be really hard for you. I'm sorry. Tell me about your work here in the diner. Oh, it's wonderful. I love it. My boss. Oh, glad to hear that. Other than the diner and the gym, you don't work anywhere else, right? I wouldn't have the time, although I'm not sure I want to continue working at the gym. It might be best to stay away from the gym, at least for a while, for your own well-being. In due time, things might change. 
Joey used to say the same thing. Maybe. I don't know. Thanks. What do you think about Jake Ostiambi? Who? Who's that? A big gorilla. Boxer, too. A friend of Joe Dunn's. Oh, yeah. I barely know him. I don't like how he looks at me. Um, sorry. I think that's it for now. See you around. We'll miss you at Sam's Diner. Bye-bye. Welcome to Sam's Di- What can I do for you, Mr. Blacksad? Can I have a hamburger, please? Oh, sure. Regular or cheese? Regular. That'll do. Mm-hmm. You want fries? A drink? No, that's it. Okay. Is that for here or to go, then? To go, please. Mm. One burger to go, Sam. Okay! Smells like cinnamon. No, cinnamon and burgers. Her handwriting is nice and neat. Your burger is ready. you enjoy your meal. Four people used the back door that very same night. Huh? Well, I might be blind as a bat, but as you can certainly see, I have two wonderfully functional ears. <laughs> very kind of you. Shame it didn't have any cheese, though. <laughs> Four people used the back door two days ago? Yeah, that's right. <coughs> Who was the first person to use the back door? Someone big. Unlocked the door, stepped inside, <laughs> then came right back out. Who was the second person to use the back door? A man. Just a few minutes after the first person. He came back out muttering, ungrateful bastard. Then, he threw something in the trash and walked back in. Oh, no, wait. Before that, he gave me a coin. A coin? I mean, do I look like I need spare change, huh? I mean, I'm staying at the Million Star Hotel, for God's sake. <laughs> Who was the fourth person to use the back door? Someone big. I recall heavy breathing. The person left in a hurry, running in that direction. Who was the third person to use the back door? Judging by the quiet footsteps, I'd say it was someone small. I'd say it was about 30 minutes after the second person came out. Whoever it was threw something in the trash and stood in front of me for a moment. Then, I heard a click. And finally, I heard trailing laughter in that direction. I 
wonder what it's like to be blind. Would I cope? Blind and legless. How does he get by? Could he have been a train conductor? Looks like someone used it as a punching ball. Where did you get that paint can? In the trash can, in the back. I found it right after the comings and goings. I wanted to see what those people were leaving behind. There's a chest expander in your cart. A what expander? A thingamajig with three springs. Oh, the thingamajig with springs. Oh, I, I got it from the trash back there. A paint can and a thingamajig with springs. What a night. You were acting a bit strange before, but now you seem fine. Why is that? Hey. You got great vision, sense of smell, and hearing. Why is that? Well, I'm a cat. Well, I'm a goat. That's all for now. Thanks. <laughs>